throughout human history, migration has been a courageous expression of the individual's will to overcome adversity and to live a better life. A survey conducted by Pew Research Center, a US-based think tank, revealed more than 75% of Ghanaians, if given the chance, will leave Ghana without hesitation. Ghana is not spared of the increasing threat of irregular or illegal migration. The horrifying experiences of Ghanaian migrants going through the desert to Libya with the hope of getting to Europe has been reported over time. But this has not deterred most of these young people, especially from the Bonahafu region, from embarking on this dangerous journey in search of greener pastures, which often ends in disappointment. I want a, a, a job, a, a traveling that you get at least a settlement, you get a place to settle yourself. You know, the citizens are going to enough of blah, 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 blah to just survive, you know. What are the pull and push factors of migration? Um, how best do we um, tackle the issue from the root and not the branch? And I'm also inclined to believe that uh, the coverage of migration uh, in some instances double the evil rather than finding solutions to this problem. Doma is a border town where some of these young people wait for their travel agents to cross over into Ivory Coast. Some others also go through in Kuranza. Max Simpson worked as a teacher in Libya for five years. He has been on this journey three times and has documented his experiences in three separate books. Let's use Brongafu as a starting point. Yeah, so when they, when they leave Brongafu, they go to Wakadugu and then from there they go to Niger. Some also, there's another route at Lumi. From Lumi, they bought a luxurious bus to Niger. So the whole, the main journey itself starts from Niger. And that is, there's a town called Agadas. That is how, that is where the whole smuggling thing starts. So from Agadas, they have this connection men. Um, they are smugglers, you know, outlaws. So you will entrust your life, your life to them. So they are the ones who are going to set smuggling out of Niger and then to, to Libya. Any easel from Niger to Libya is between death and life. When it decides to send any plane to bring down in from Libya, I think the plane might come empty. The yeah. plane might come empty? Yes. The, the reason is, um, is the, Libya is a country where it's closer to Europe. The reason why most of the Ghanaians go there is they want to get to Europe through the Mediterranean. So for the person to come back to Ghana without any promise of a job or any future, he'd rather stay there. Some people go on this journey hoping to be rescued by humanitarian agency ships, but that option is fast fading out. We know that there are individuals in these countries that are businessmen and we can trace where these migrants are coming from and deal with the root causes of migration. Uh, if there is anything we haven't done very well is to tackle head on the causes of migration. We haven't done that and we haven't also arrested the people and the, the, and the situations that Ghanaians are sent through like on the desert, on the Mediterranean. When people lose their lives it's not so crucial to us and if there is any time we have to change this, it has to be now because now it's clear that the Italians, for instance, who have been saving the people are not ready to do that anymore. And many other people on the shores of Europe will not be doing that. Can you imagine when somebody is dying at the high seas and there's no rescue? This is a reality we're going to face in the, few, in the coming days when the Italians pull out all the boats that rescue people.
So how do these migrants survive after they arrive at their destination? What awaits them in the imaginary land of greener pastures? I'm in Barcelona, the commercial capital of Spain and one of the few cities in Europe that these migrants settle when they successfully cross the Mediterranean. Spain has become one of the main destinations of migrants from across Africa who cross the Mediterranean successfully. On our way, we spot a migrant on the Rabla de Mar Bridge. Which year did you come here? Senegalese. Uh, I'm coming here and uh, in the Pirog, you know? Okay. Yeah. So, how long have you been here? How many years? I have, I have three years. Three years? Yeah. Okay, and you sell bags here? Yeah. Can, and, you, uh, can you have, have, have police? Okay. I'm here. Right. When the police coming, I'm going. You oh, you're going? Yeah, yeah. So when the police are not here, you yeah, sell. Yeah. But when they are coming, you take your stuff yeah, and yeah. you run. And we we'll go. Yeah. And you go. Yeah. How much does this go for? That one? Yeah. 20 euros. 20 euros. Yeah. So the police are here, and as a result, he has to now pack his stuff and, and go. Osman arrived in Spain after being rescued on the Mediterranean. How much is it? Alright, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I visited Christian Toby, a Cameroonian studying law in Barcelona. Hello Alfred, welcome to my to Barcelona. Welcome to my office too. Thank you, thank you very much. It's an amazing <laughs> place, so we have to be running around. And, uh, <laughs> she tells us what most African migrants go through. Oh my God, it's not easy at all. We have people, women, working as, a, as, as cleaners in buildings. That's, a, that's the job that you get easily when you don't have your paper in order. Oh, uh, and, and for men, normally they, they're workers, we, as you can, you can we all expect, okay? But unfortunately, that was, it was easiest before 2008. After 2008, many Spaniard people uh, lo lose their job. So we became, uh, the, we became, let's say, the alibi of the, yeah. I don't know how to say, God, uh, like uh, when you choose someone and you, you make it guilty, you make him or her guilty for something. Right, more like a scapegoat. So. A scapegoat, thank you. So. I uh, remember that after that, it was even difficult to be a cooker or to be a worker or to be a cleaner because for the first time in many years in Spain, people, Spaniard people wanted that job. Those menial jobs? Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't this, that. that's it. It wasn't the same anymore. So right now, even for, for be a cleaner, for be a cooker or for clean for every silly job or simple one so you need your papers in order we in second we don't come for the same reason you have a mother that have came here because okay they have just crossed the Mediterranean Sea the Mediterranean Sea and they have they have the baby born here life is never easy for these migrants living illegally they are exposed to many forms of life-threatening situations coupled with the possibility of being sent home empty handed Can you play football? I'm Ghana. Oh, you, well, yeah. It's all about football. Yeah, Ghana, yeah, yeah. I like football. <laughs> you know, I like football. I like Abidi Pele. Yeah. All, this, yeah, no? all of them football. Yeah, John Mensa. John yeah, Mensa. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 
Give me shelter, shelter. 